operations room, Hitler's headquarters, following the attempt on the Fuhrer's life. Conjecture runs high as to whether in fact he did escape at the time, or succumbed later to his injuries. These are the German newsreel pictures put out to dispel rumour in the Reich. Rumour which, if anything, has grown over the weeks of his continued silence. According to Goebbels, everyone at the conference, with the exception of General Korten and the Führer, was blown out of the windows by the bomb. A black-cloaked Hitler stands on the platform to welcome the deflated Duce. From beneath concealing folds, he extends his left hand in greeting. Marvellous how he got away with such minor injury and shock. Graziani, Mussolini's sidekick, also joins in the chorus of Heils. Alongside Hitler walks the present virtual dictator of Germany, Himmler. Many fanciful notions about the doubles Hitler is supposed to use might here be put to the test. Is this Mr. Schuckelgruber or a stooge? The face at the window, part two. The departure of Mussolini, presumably after listening for hours to Hitler's boring bomb story. Look at his right arm now, coming on nicely. Tannenberg and the Wagnerian funeral ceremony of Colonel General Korten, chief of staff of the Luftwaffe, one of those killed by the bomb that was meant for Hitler. Here we have the gross figure of Marshal Goering mourning at the service to the man who organized the heavy raids on Coventry and London. Next development in the chain of events is the visit by Hitler to the hospital where severely injured Nazi notables lie in bandages and tannic acid. Significant that they were personal spies of the Führer used to watch the German high command. Swapping injuries at the bedside, Hitler implies what a wonderful recovery he's made. A mighty providence saved our leader, says Goebbels, and loyal Nazis shriek, Heil. Even so, their lord and master looked aged and weighed down. Propaganda minister Dr. Goebbels does some overtime thinking to appear convincing in his pronouncements on this stew of intrigue where Prussian generals plot against the man they once put into power. Commandant of a Berlin guard battalion, Major Rehmer, who put down the attempted military rising timed to coincide with the bomb plot, out Hollywood's every screen Nazi in a fire-eating speech to his men. A real bawling out for his officers and men. We are today, thank God, political soldiers, he says. That in case they labor under the delusion that the German high command is greater than the party generals. The ham gag about living space gets an airing too. Make no mistake, there are plenty of those goose-stepping professional killers in Germany yet. Whether they hold allegiance to Hitler or the Prussian generals makes no odds. The German is always a German, a seeker after world domination. Now take a glimpse into the hinterland of the Reich. Here's the newly formed Home Guard of Germany, pictured on the screen for the first time. The Volkssturm, inspected by Gauleiter Lauterbacher. In their ranks are men of the Landwacht, the defense conscripts who are placed on guard against saboteurs and escaped foreign workers. What an amazing twist of fortune that the would-be master race should now be scraping the bottom of the barrel of her manpower. And what of her armies in the field? the spectacle of exodus from the countries they sought to conquer. Four years ago, they were the mighty mechanized Wehrmacht. They travel now in a reverse direction, and here is the order of their going. Many a beaten battalion is being driven towards and over the frontiers of their evil land. Theirs is the order to stand and fight to the last man. And who will that last man be? It's anybody's guess. This time, there must be no comeback for Germany. Who was it said? If an ass goes traveling, he will not come back a horse. 